His hat on her. Did he actually? <laughs> the day was really fun. Nick's a cool guy. He's very flirtatious. <laughs> Open wide. <laughs> eyes were straight on Tina, just looking at Tina. Tina was with Taku, doing her thing. She was looking at him, he was looking at her. I'm like, boy, you're on the wrong side of the bed. No, not side, you're on the wrong bed. Hey, kings and queens, welcome back to my channel. to girl royalty, and you are now watching royalty TV yet. Bam! <laughs> Welcome, welcome everybody. I am back with another Love Island Australia 2021 season 3 episode 10. Wow, we're making progress and it has not been a dull moment. <laughs> okay, so yes. Um, from last episode, we saw Chris and new girl Zoe lock lips together like, I don't know, they were trying to <laughs> to create something. I don't know, but yeah, that, that was where last episode ended. And going on in today's episode, episode 10, new boy Nicholas is definitely trying to get to know Tina. And yeah, the both of them are together, you know, talking and he's trying to know her. She's laughing. She's definitely feeling his vibes. By the way, I think I said it before that Nicholas guy is really hot. He is hot. He's got just good eyes, good physique, good everything. He's got a butt. <laughs> yeah, so Tina was definitely feeling him. And then Mitch, Tina's ex, walked past and was like, Are you guys talking about me? And they laughed about it. And I thought, like, Okay, that was just it, but boy, got jealous. <laughs> Oh my god. You, 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 wait, wait, wait. You don't know why I'm laughing like this. I'm laughing this hard because if you watch the Love Island after party, the trivia section from the Islanders, when they were asked, oh, would you rather you walk into your ex on their date or they walk into your date with your um, current and <laughs> Mitch was like, he, he rather he walks into his ex, you know, on their date, you know, and Tina was like, she would rather her ex walks into her on her date. And that was exactly what happened. <laughs> and boy, Mitch was jealous. The next day, um, of course, Emily was trying to talk to Mitch, like, where you at, you know, I think we can finally sleep together on the bed, you know, blah, blah, all the stuff. But Mitch was just really pulling and dragging. And I'm like, this guy is not feeling this girl. Whatever they had was just tension. That was what it was. But whatever thing he has going with Tina is definitely deep, you know. So the next minute, Mitch was alone. He's sitting, he's down, he's like feeling low. And Tina walks in, oh, you started me. And like, okay, are you okay? And guy breaks down like, I don't know, I'm just feeling really down, I'm torn. You know, the minute I saw you and Nick t talking, you know, he just said something in me. He's emotional, he's almost crying and Tina was emotional. She, she comforted him and hugged him like, why don't you just pick me, you know? Like I know when I talk to Emily, you know, there's this black, there's this, there's that, but I'm just confused. I'm like, guy. It's very clear. The fact that you're still confused after almost a day of being with your new couple or partner, I mean, it's a, it says everything already that you're with, the, you're with the wrong person. Eventually, Mitch and Emily sh shared the bed, but he was basically like lying on the bed like this and his eyes were straight on Tina, just looking at Tina. Tina was with Taku, doing her thing. She was looking at him, he was looking at her. I'm like, boy, you're on the wrong side of the bed. No, not side, you're on the wrong bed. <laughs> anyway, move on. Next, there's a text on Zoe's phone to pick three guys who would treat her for breakfast. And also a text on Nicola's phone to pick three girls who would treat him, you know, to breakfast. And Zoe chose Chris. Taku and Ryan. Nicholas chose Courtney, Tina, and Lexi. Okay, so they made breakfast. Beautiful. Chris made hot chocolate and all those stuff. And Chris and Chris and Zoe had a beautiful conversation as always. Zoe was definitely feeling the interaction between, you know, herself and Chris. You know, and then it was Taku's um uh, um breakfast date and 
that she doesn't like fruit. She was like, oh, uh, I'm like, girl, if you don't take fruit or you don't take orange juice, you just say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not big on fruit or I don't do orange juice instead of, you know, uh, you, I don't know. So how she might feel like, oh, I don't want him to feel bad, but I think he would have appreciated it more if she said, oh, this is beautiful, but I don't just take fruit than doing like this, like, girl, it doesn't smell. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, that date definitely didn't go well. According to Taco, it was a hell of a date. And then next to Ryan, Ryan definitely do not make a presentable platter. Both Ryan and Lexi, their platter was all mixed up, you know, the pancakes, syrup, whatever. And yeah, Ryan definitely was kind and sweet to give Zoe a heart because the whole time she was trying you know to squint under the sun that was directly on her eyes and oh my god new boy Nicholas definitely leaves off drama <laughs> bought your hat too because I thought you were going to need to oh, do oh my god thank you it's alright all right, I literally I've actually really been struggling I don't know if you want to turn around but he put his hat on her did he actually <laughs> The day was really fun. Nick's a cool guy. He's very flirtatious. <laughs> Open way. <laughs> I feel like you're putting me in a very dangerous <laughs> position right now. He started hitting on Lexi and he's like, oh my God, give me this evil smile. I'm like, Lexi, I know, but I don't mind stepping on toes. And he's telling us he wants to, you know, to spice things up. Stare on some drama and like, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on, Nick. <laughs> He's a bad, bad guy and I love it. You know, in fact, Love Island Australia, they are really doing it for us this season. And it's been, you know, beautiful from one dope episode to another. It's not forced to drama like Bachelor or Bachelorette. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, so yeah. Nick was definitely hitting on Lexi and Lexi was feeling it. She was definitely enjoying it. And Ryan was looking over his head. Ryan is definitely not feeling it, but Lexi was enjoying the attention. And she's like, oh my God, he likes trouble. I'm like, come on, Lexi. <laughs> he likes trouble. He's definitely coming on me to me. Oh gosh. Anyway, with Courtney and Nicholas, um, they definitely went well. You know, with Courtney, it's definitely easy to have a conversation. She's blunt as hell. She's just like, oh my God, we're flowing very well. Can we cancel the other date? <laughs> okay, so yeah, and of course, it was Tina's and Nicholas's breakfast date. Beautiful platter, you know. You know, Taco can arrange, so definitely Taco you know, helped her out. You know, there's bread, there was egg, there was fruit, you know, just beautiful. Uh, platter and of course Mitch uh, did I say Mitch I'm sorry Nicholas who likes trouble was like oh you know bring it on for her to put some grapes in his mouth and you needed to see Mitch's face he was just like <laughs> I love it I love it I love it I love it <laughs> I love it guys oh my god I love seeing Mitch's face he was so jealous I'm like yes you know you don't know what you have until you lose it so yeah he was so not feeling it and that was like oh no I'm done I am done playing this game this triangle game I'm about to break this triangle and turn it into a straight ruler <laughs> okay so they had this rodeo game and oh my god don't even get me started Ryan was so hot out there I was just like watching and all like Wow! It is Ryan! And I'm like, of course, you know, going by his number 500, he should win. <laughs> I think Lexi definitely did her thing. You know, it was between Lexi and Tina for the boys, but they gave it to Tina, yeah, and Tina was great too. And, and the, the girls, all the girls were great, really. Yeah, Tina won and move on mitch cannot take it no more he definitely went up to emily for a conversation like girl i'm sorry how you know this whole thing dragged but uh, i can't keep doing this to myself and i can't keep doing it to both of you because it's toxic and it's like honestly like i feel 
Like, I know, I honestly know deep down you're going to be fuming at me and, like, that's so fine. I would be the other way too. Yeah, I don't want to say the cliche line, but I'm not angry, it's just disappointing. I feel like I've just made an ass of myself, like, you know, all the tears, all the angst, all the, like, emotional torment, like, I just feel like I did everything possible to, to have a fair shot and you didn't give it one. Yeah. Move on, I'm moving on to Tina. I'm going back to Tina and I want to be with her. And Emily was sad. She was not happy. She was like, it's not like I'm not happy. I just feel, you know, um, like I wasted my time, my efforts, and, you know, girl is not happy. That's what it is. She was sad. It is what it is. Mitch comforted her. They hugged it out. I'm sorry. I, you know, she was like, oh, he led me on. She was telling us, I'm like, girl, he did not lead you. You were flirting with him and he loved your attention, of course, you know. And I'm just like, really, guys, I respect to those of you who are like, um, you respect the fact that Mitch did not sleep on her bed, you know, yesterday. I kind of saw your point and yes, you guys were right because really he's really torn and he's been truthful and honest all the way with Tina, you know, and honestly, and there are different levels, you know, of, of a man, if you ask me. So I respect men who have self-control and I also respect the kind of man who, even though he gives in to the flirt, he's tempted, he knows where his true value lies his true value, his true connection, his true chemistry, his true woman. And he turns right back and like, you know what? Um, this whole thing is beautiful. I like it. It's well packaged. It's um, inviting, but I got to go back home. <laughs> yeah, so I definitely have my hearts, you know, dark up for Mitch. I really respected him for going back to where his true connection is because definitely it's obvious that these guys have true connection. They have depth, you know, but with Emily is just, you know, surface level and just sexual tension. Anyway, Emily was not feeling it. She was really, she was, she was frustrated, you know, because before now she was already telling the girls like, I mean, we shared the same bed. Did he cuddle you? No. Did he kiss you? No. And Ari and Courtney were like, uh, like, it's an obvious sign this guy's not into you. So she's already been frustrated before Mitch came, you know, to call it a quit. And yeah, she's not happy. She's like, you know, trying to encourage herself. But I, I felt pity for her when she was having that tension after crying. And now she's ready to strategize and she's just dabbing that face. Like, girl, you are ready to shoot, you know, your next arrow to the next available person. You got this, babe. You tried your best. You gave it a shot, all right? You. But Cupid is not ready to fly towards that next person you are aiming at. Of course, she's aiming at Taku. She immediately, you know, dressed up and everything. And she, you know, um, I really had my eyes on you first. You know, I'm, I'm really feeling sad. Like, why did I just go for you? Because I came in here, you know, for you. And Taku was like, hmm. Taco was looking at her and also like dabbing his finger, giving me, you know, the impression like he's like thinking about like, are you serious or a little bit nervous or something? So yeah, she's definitely going for Taco and letting him know that, hey, if you still want to give it a try, I'm open. You know, I was here for you initially. I'm like, girl, this strategy is as old as time itself. We know the story. We know this book. We know this route and we know this strategy. Taku is no dumping ground. You better take your strategy, your hooks, your cupid arrows off Taku. Taku is no dumping ground. Gosh. Oh, I'm so sad the way everybody wants to, you know, prey on Taku. The minute they're available, oh, they go to Taku. The minute, uh, it's so freaking annoying. And somebody needs to come, you know, for Taku. 
maybe in Casa Amor, like they said in the after party. If you guys are not watching the after party, check it out. I I did an upload. It's definitely fun. The extra scoop and juice, you know. Yeah, so someone comes for taco. <laughs> Romy is literally wasted. Oh, um, Ari, I'm really focused to getting to know you now. Like now, Ari's like, I want to take you know my time. I don't want to stop. Honestly, Ari is zoned out of running. Ari's not into anybody. She's still really, really. She allowed herself to be knocked down too hard, you know, from the Ryan situation. And I'm hoping someone comes for her, maybe now or at Casa or more, because really, Ari's person is not in that house. And she's kind of become a shadow of herself. We can barely really see Ari because she's not active. I guess she doesn't get airtime. And of course, we saw um, the blonde couples, Aaron and Jess doing their thing. They just look, you know, bare, you know, to me, superficial. They seem for us. I don't see no depth. And I don't know. There's just something that's not clicking between those two for me. But they're just there. <laughs> Time for the bombshells to couple up and choose who their partners will be. They got a tags, and yes, Lexi is you know feeling like maybe Nicholas is gonna pick her, you know, because of how he's been acting and coming on to her. And Ryan is looking at her and you no know, feeling, seeing you know how she's being agitated and all that. And of course, Nicholas came out, the girl I would like to pick from the moment I came into here. Courtney is definitely feeling like she's going to be the one winking with Jess. Like, I know it's going to pick me, you know. <laughs> and after seeing all of those beautiful, you know, things, of course, Lexi was also like, okay, okay, would it be me? Would it be me? And he picked Courtney, which was good. And Ryan was looking at, and Ryan was looking at Lexi the whole time. And it's making me feel like, hmm, Ryan can see that Lexi girl. Could it be you are interested in this guy? And if he's beginning to have those thoughts, those two are definitely heading for the hills because when any girl comes with Ryan, Ryan is going to give it his full attention because he can see that Lexi was almost halfway, you know, towards Nicholas. Anyway, Nicholas chose Courtney. Courtney is excited. He's happy about it. They're a couple now. And then it was time for Zoe. Zoe was, okay, the guy I'm about to pick. She said she was confused between Taku and Chris, but we all know it was going to be Chris. So yes, she chose Chris. And then Emily got a test, you know, letting the Islanders know not to get too comfortable because, you know, something is going to happen pretty soon. And everybody's like, oh my God, fingers crossed. And of course, Sophie let us in on either there's going to be trouble there's going to be a double dumping. I'm like, oh my God, double dumping? Like seriously, we're not prepared <laughs> for Long Island, Australia 2021. We are so not prepared. So yeah, there's going to be trouble. I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow, but we will see. So yeah, that's it pretty much on today's episode. You guys let me know your thoughts on it. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on your post notification bell for more so you do not miss another episode. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great, great day. Be good. Be Great to yourself and be kind to others. Bye. I, I want nobody but you.